Greetings family, this is Leah Zaman, The Naturally You Coach. Welcome to another live. Today I am going to be talking about pregnancy health, five tips to pregnancy health. And just to introduce myself, my name is Leah Salmon, The Naturally You Coach. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, nutritionist and life coach on a mission to help 100,000 black women to eat for health, think for happiness and live in harmony by 2020 with a focus on womb health, pregnancy health and premature birth prevention, which is why today we are speaking about five tips to pregnancy. Greetings everyone coming in live on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, this is a live video, so I welcome your comments so we can talk and share ideas. Um, but if you don't catch the live, then you can definitely catch the whole thing via the replay, which will be available on Facebook forever <laughs> on my page. And then on my blog at thenaturallyyoucoach.com forward slash blog. Thank you so much for the lovely reactions coming in on Facebook. Thank you everyone. Oh, flowers, thank you so much. Thank you darlings coming in on Instagram and on Facebook. So I say this every week, but I'm actually time committed today. So I'm really gonna do my best to get through this, um, get through these five tips uh, in, in the next half an hour. Greetings, Insights Marketing. If anyone needs help with their branding, their social media marketing, and you want an award-winning sister to help your campaign, definitely check out Insights Marketing or the Roberts who has helped me in the past to get to my goal. Thank you, Wide-Eyed Mummy, for coming in and joining me today on Instagram. I know some of you are going to be seeing the wording on the whiteboard backwards. I'm so sorry about that. I don't even know how to fix that because on Facebook, it's the right way around. And on Instagram, it's back to front. But this is what we are going to be touching on today. This is what we're going to be looking at today, which is five tips to a healthy pregnancy. Now, there are so many things that you can do to improve your chances, to boost your chances of having a healthy, successful pregnancy. And... So today we're literally just looking at five of them. So any mummies out there, any yummy mummies out there who are listening to this broadcast, then please feel free to share any other tips based on the five tips that I've got here or any other tips that you feel would be beneficial to either a new mum, a mum who, or a, a sister who wants to get pregnant, who wants to find out what they should do to have a healthy pregnancy. And I, and I think even more than that, a mother like the mother I was, who was a mother who had had a challenging pregnancy and was doubting their ability to have a, any more subsequent healthy pregnancies because I literally did a one of the videos, I've been doing little one minute videos, little one minute um, tips on health and one of my one minute videos the other day was literally talking about the fact that fear can ruin, not ruin, but fear can really get in the way of your chances of becoming pregnant if you are currently facing infertility issues, if you are struggling to conceive. Because when you've got those negative thoughts and feelings and fears in your mind, it can literally block the success of the physical actions that you're taking. So if in the example of fertility, when you have tried several times to get pregnant and it's not working if you have conceived and then the baby has passed on all of those the the, the trauma of those events stays with you and it will hinder your um actions to actually get pregnant again holding resentment for your partner um not having confidence in your own body's ability to conceive all of those things create stress. And as we know, when they say stress is a killer, they're not, it's not just a saying. <laughs> stress can literally kill dead your, the, the effectiveness of your physical efforts. So, and the same thing can be true for pregnancies. As a mother who has had two very challenging pregnancies, one of which resulted in a baby who was born so early that he ended up eventually passing on at eight months after living his whole life in the hospital. I needed as much positive information i needed as much you can do it i can i needed as much of these tips as i possibly could because just to quickly tell you my story i have had seven pregnancies in the last 12 years the first two pregnancies that i had were premature so my first baby who's now 13 years old was born at 30 weeks of pregnancy so I was a young, new mum. I thought I knew everything about pregnancy because I'd seen my sisters being pregnant and having successful full-time pregnancies. And it didn't seem like they were doing anything particularly special. So I didn't think I needed to do anything particularly special. 
So when I literally woke up next to my now husband in basically a pool of blood, um, blood and liquid, I panicked, he panicked. <laughs> Thankfully, we were living with my mum, who was a nurse, so she was a bit calmer, but she was like, get your butt to the hospital. Went to the hospital, realised that I had a condition called SHROM, which was spontaneous rupture of the membranes. The membrane around the amniotic, around your placenta, mine had ruptured, a hole had formed in my um, baby's protective sac, basically. So the amniotic fluid, as well as some blood, was coming out. Um, and as scared as I was, I tried to stay positive, but then about a week later, I ended up having a... She, she came, basically. And I went into hospital. I was, I was literally having contractions for about a, a number of hours, but because I was seven and a half months pregnant, I'm like, this can't be labour. Because I know I had the leap the other day, but this can't be labour. So I didn't really take it seriously until they started getting more regular and more painful. And then we went to the hospital and then they gave me some drugs. They gave me pethidine, in fact, to try and slow the pregnancy down, to slow the um, birth down. But that didn't actually quite work. It just made me high. And I remember when my brother and my mum came in and I was high on pethidine. I was like, I remember just talking nonsense. And in my head, I was thinking, I can't believe you're saying this stuff. But it was just coming out. It was just coming out because I was high on pethidine because that's what they were giving me to try and slow the contractions down. And it wasn't working. So she came and she was born at 30 weeks. So seven and a half months. She stayed in the hospital for six weeks. And then she came home. And it was a very challenging time. However, I then got pregnant again shortly afterwards. So um, I kind of expected that when I presented to the doctors to let them know that I was pregnant again, I would be given advice and booklets and booked into checks and all these greetings, sis, greetings, Charmaine. I thought I would be like given some advice so that that didn't happen again. But the advice and the information and the support that I was given after having one premature baby and then getting pregnant again qu quickly afterwards, because one of the risk factors of having a premature child is having a previous premature child. So that was me. But I didn't get any of that support. I didn't get any of the information. I didn't. And again, we live in we live in England. Like we don't have that as m we don't have as much of a culture of all coming together and sharing and and sometimes <laughs> sometimes when we try and implement that culture it doesn't go very well because i've heard of you know family getting together and giving advice to a pregnant mum and some of the advice is just interesting advice so we do need to kind of create, I mean, social media is brilliant for this, is creating a space where we can share positive, useful information with women who have had troubling pregnancies before, who have had problems um, conceiving, any of those kind of things. Um, so we can ensure that we are looking after our sisters, basically, and creating that online sisterhood that is so important because that's literally how we used to live. If we had any problems, we didn't go on Google. We didn't go to the doctors. We would go to a family member. We would go to a grandmother, an auntie, our own mothers, our older sisters, and get the advice and the information. So th hopefully Facebook Lives like this and videos like this can be an opportunity, not just for me to share, but for you lot to share your information and your advice with us as well. I'm going to be at the... Another quick announcement, I'm going to be at the Black History Studies Black Market, which is happening on the 1st of September in West Green Road in North London. So if you're available, then definitely come down to that. Go to blackhistorystudies.com or go into Eventbrite and search for the Black Market September and all the information will come out. And we've got Sister Charmaine live on Facebook with us right now. So these are the tips that I'm going to be focusing on. And again, I'm sorry if this is backwards. Instagram darlings okay so five of the many things that you can do five of the many things that you can focus on to have a healthy pregnancy is one water now if you've watched any number of my <laughs> videos or podcasts you know I talk about water a lot and I'm not going to stop talking about water because quite frankly we all know we're meant to be drinking more and we jolly well don't so if it's going to take me talking about water in every single video I do to remind you to go and get some water like if you're if you're watching me on a portable device you can stand up and take yourself to the kitchen if you know you haven't already had enough water today and go ahead and drink some because I know I'm talking about pregnancy health here but you darn well know that every one of us needs to be making sure we're drinking enough water. So, one of the things we're talking about is water for pregnancy. The next thing we're talking about is exercise. Another thing that helps is herbs and oils, and I'm talking about aromatherapy oils, essential oils. Support and checks. 
and focusing on success. So I'm going to briefly talk about each one of these. Very soon, I would say maybe in the next four to six weeks, in the same way that I've got the three-part womb wellness gift set, which is literally a uh, a nine steps to um, nine monthly steps to womb health, to and a um, nine monthly steps of womb health, a th uh, eating plan for womb health, and then a audio MP3, all to help you to start your natural health journey as far as your womb health is concerned, and you can find that at the naturallyyoucoach.com forward slash womb wellness gift. I'm also going to be creating a healthy pregnancy um, gift set. So it's probably going to be the same type of thing. It's going to be an ebook with an audio MP3 mini training as well. So I'm going to be covering these steps in more detail on that free gift that's going to be out again, probably in the next four to six weeks, plus some more. It's probably going to be a 19 step um, a free gift, but this is these are just five of them. So let me just cr have a quick look on Instagram to say hi to some people. Thank you so much, all you lovely people, for coming in. I appreciate all of your time, whether you are here on the replay or whether you are here live with me today. Oh, thank you so much. Insights and Marketing has posted the link to the Black Market on the Facebook page. Gonna drink water right now, I'm so bad with this. Thank you, Charmaine, for being so honest with us. I appreciate you, sis. Because vast majority of us are, like I even know there are times when it will get to, like, I know this doesn't sound like it's bad, but there's times when it gets to 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't drank any water and I've been up for hours. <laughs> Because there are times when by 10 o'clock I have actually been up for hours. Recently, I've been focusing more on getting more sleep. So I haven't been as strict as getting up in the morning. So like literally this week, I swear I've been waking up at 9.30 every morning. But the day still gets done, so it's all good. So when I wake up at that time, I'm like thirsty already. But then there'll, there's, there can be gaps. When you're busy, like when you're at work, I understand when you're at work, when you're traveling, you don't want to drink too much because you don't want to use public trans public toilets. I fully understand all that. But when you are in a position to drink more water, please go ahead and drink more water. Like, even if you need to get one of those water apps that reminds you to drink water, then go ahead and do it. But let's get started on the tips for pregnancy health. So, water, as you know, is amazingly useful for all of your body's um, processes. There's a whole book dedicated to water called Your Body's Many Cries for Water. It is an awesome book and in that book the, doc the doctor that wrote it, Dr. Batman Gilhedi, mentions at least 50 different um, conditions and illnesses in the body that drinking more water and being fully hydrated can help. So and pregnancy is one of them. Pregnancy, menstrual cramps, fertility can all be aided with ensuring that you're well hydrated and on another note did you realize that if you drink two full glasses of water 10 minutes before you eat which is why that's what i always recommend to my clients make sure you drink 10 minutes before you've so you start eating and then an hour after you finish but in the book he's done research into the fact that drinking two full glasses of water 10 minutes before you start eating so you finish the water and then wait 10 minutes and then you start eating it can reduce your chances of developing um, high cholesterol levels, as well as so many other things. I thought that was fascinating when I read that because I know that there's a lot of people making a lot of money off cholesterol medication. In fact, there's a book called The $10 million Cholesterol Myth. It's one of the books that I bought about five years ago and I haven't read it yet, but I know that the guy who wrote it is amazing. Thank you for jo joining me on here, Jom Jomay. Thank you so much for joining us on Facebook. So... Greetings to everyone that's coming in on Instagram as well. So, as far as pregnancy is concerned, it's also really important to get your water up. Now, I have experienced um, morning sickness. I didn't get the the very severe hypermesis, the you know the extreme morning sickness, but I was getting it to the point where I was I wasn't just feeling nauseous. There were times when I would actually throw up <laughs> in the mornings. Um, through quite a few of my pregnancies. But what I realized was that when I got into the habit of making sure that I would drink plenty of water the night before, because my morning sickness hit me first thing in the morning. With my first child, I didn't have any morning sickness for the first three months. Then from month three to month seven, literally two weeks before she came, 
I had morning sickness like no one's business. And the only thing that was that would calm my stomach down was um, wholemeal pita bread with scrambled eggs in it. So that's what I was eating for so <laughs> for literally those whole four months in between. But when I get into the ha and but th with the sub subsequent pregnancies. I realized that when I get into the habit of drinking plenty of water when I wasn't feeling nauseous, it always reduced the nausea that I had first thing in the morning. And if I drank water very slowly first thing in the morning as well, like if I just woke up and I gulped it down, guaranteed five minutes later I'd be in the toilet just vomiting up bile. 100% that would be the case. But if I slowly, very slowly sipped not warm like lukewarm almost slightly cold water it would always reduce my morning sickness in the morning now i've, I've worked with women who have had hyperemesis which means that their sickness levels were on a different level so it took a lot more than water we had to do a lot more than water with them to improve their condition but water does definitely help drinking as much water as possible like the moment you find out you're pregnant from that moment if you're not drinking enough water start drinking lots of water from that moment so that if morning sickness is going to develop it's not going to be as severe for you because the, the one of the challenges is dehydration causes um, dehydration causes morning sickness but morning sickness also causes dehydration because you're throwing up a lot of water and it's difficult for you to replace it so it becomes this like vicious cycle so if you can start to hydrate yourself fully as soon as possible and as much as possible at any point during the day when you're not feeling nauseous it really helps having enough water and being well hydrated can help to even reduce things like stretch marks your baby's amniotic fluid the baby the water that your baby is going to be wriggling around in is fully made up of water so we want to make sure that that water is kept nice and clean by making sure that there's fresh water that it can be replenished with because that water gets recycled your as with all of us our and remember when your baby's kidneys start working one of the things your baby is going to start doing, which is gross, <laughs> is they're going to start practicing drinking and peeing. And they do this by drinking the amniotic fluid and peeing it out into the amniotic fluid and then drinking it again. It's completely safe and clean because it's just amniotic fluid and they're just practicing and it's all part of nature. But I just think it's gross that your baby pees in you. OK, but you want to just make sure that all the water that's in your body is as fresh as possible <laughs> by making sure you're drinking plenty of water. You also want to make sure that you're drinking plenty of water because your digestive system uses two litres of water a day. Roughly uses two litres of water a day to, to um, digest your food. Your joints need water. Your brain needs water. Your brain needs water as a fuel source. Um, so we want to make sure that the you are... And if your body isn't given fresh water on a daily basis, it recycles the water that's already in your body. And you definitely don't want that to be happening on a regular basis while you are pregnant because that's what will lead to your headaches and skin eruptions and feeling tired and feeling lethargic and all of those kind of things. So drinking plenty of water is so critical for all levels of health, but especially pregnancy health. Exercise. Now... I know a sister who was a fitness coach before she got pregnant. So her level of pregnancy fitness was on a completely different level than mine. Now, I've always been relatively, you know, conscious of the fact that exercise on a regular basis is good. But I wasn't exercising to her degree. So my level of exercise during my pregnancy was never going to be as hardcore as her level of exercise during her pregnancy. But nevertheless, making sure you're getting some level of exercise during your pregnancies is so important. So again, if you are planning on getting pregnant now, exercise can actually help increase your chances of conception in the first place. But when you do get pregnant, you can still maintain a level of exercise that's suitable for you. Um, throughout your whole pregnancy because again it helps with your energy it helps with your it helps with all the things that it helps with when you're not pregnant to be honest but on top of that because when you're pregnant it's a you know pregnancy is a very natural very healthful um, condition to be in don't get me wrong but your body is under a different level of stress there is oxidative stress that's happening when you're pregnant you have to make sure that you are 
um, nourished enough to maintain yourself and the baby that's growing within you. And nature does so many things to ensure that this happens, but you need to be working with nature. So making sure you're having enough water, make sure you're exercising on a regular basis, but exercising in a safe way. So running isn't always a great idea. Anything that you are, any exercise that's like com combat, obviously you don't want to do any martial arts or self-defense or anything like that while you're expecting. Um, fitness with balls involved or tools or anything that could potentially hit you or your tummy. Obviously, you don't want to mess with any of that. But things like pregnancy, yoga, if you already swim, swimming in a clean pool. I have this thing about swimming anyway. But in a clean pool, like you might want to find out the day that the local swimming pool, the, the pool that you're going to be swimming in. Most swimming pools, they clean the water or they replace the water once a week or once every two weeks. So you might want to find out when that happens in your local pool and then go to the swimming pool the morning after that so that you're in the freshest, cleanest water possible. So swimming, pregnancy yoga, all of those kind of gentle exercises um, or, or just maintaining the level of exercise that you're currently doing in a safe way. If you have any concerns about any of that, then definitely go and work with an experienced yoga teacher a pregnancy yoga teacher and of course if you're really concerned definitely go ahead and consult your medical doctor who aren't always trained in fitness and exercise but it's always still a, a safety precaution to you know consult your medical doctor but there are pregnancy yoga instructors like the sister Hiquette, um that you can find um, her website is nature's Najeti, or you can search for Hiquette. Um, Najeti on Facebook. I actually did an interview with her the other day because she specializes in aromatherapy oils now and it was one of the best podcasts I've recorded so f so far because she was just very concise with the information. It was a very informative podcast and that's going to be coming out soon. She didn't really touch on pregnancy that much but it was very um, interesting. But yeah, she does pregnancy yoga. She does pregnancy yoga classes. I think somewhere in South London. So exercise is so important, but more than it being giving you all the benefits that we, we, that it would give you when you whether you're pregnant or not. Exercise also helps to prepare and strengthen your body and your muscles for birth. So again, it's just been found countless times that women who do women who do engage in some regular exercise um, throughout their pregnancy do seem to have um, quicker. Um, less complicated um, birth. Not to say that it's pain free, <laughs> but it's just less complicated because they're because your body has been strengthened, your muscles have been strengthened in preparation for that amazing um, occurrence, which is delivery. Thank you. Yes, drinking two liters of water a day and being active daily helps. Thank you so much for that confirmation, sis. I appreciate you. Okay, so oh goodness gracious, what have I done? Um, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so exercise. Oh, the other and one of the other benefits, and I always say this, and again, I was fascinated to find this out because it's just amazing how nature works. Exercising actually helps your body to absorb the nutrients you're eating in your food more efficiently. So again, there are these 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 you, we have vicious cycles that we know about, but there's also these holistic cycles that exist in nature and throughout our body as well. Just showing how integrated and holistic um, health maintenance can be. So when you are eating healthy foods exercising is not only going to be easier because you're getting more nutrients from the healthy foods that you're eating, but the fact that you are exercising is going to help your body to get more of the nutrients out of that healthy food, all of which creates that gorgeous cycle. Because the more you're exercising, the more um, energy you're going to need. And if you're already eating healthy food, it's going to increase your appetite to the point where you're eating more of that healthy food. And that healthy food is going to help you exercise and it's going to give your body more nutrients. And the more nutrients you have, the stronger you become, the easier exercises become. And it's all one lovely spiral of success. What do you recommend to eat when pregnant? Okay, this is a very, <laughs> that is a very um, wide answer. But it is going to be, I am going to give some information on that in the free gift that's available. But to be honest, when you're um, pregnant, one of the best pieces of advice that I would give people is to eat food that's as healthy as you would eat when you're not pregnant. See, pregnancy is an extension of our life. Again, 
it is a, another dimension and there are considerations that you you know things you do need to take into consideration but if you were eating healthy before you were pregnant then you can continue doing that when you become pregnant there are obviously some foods that are unsafe for you to eat like cheese molded cheeses cheeses with blue veins raw fishes raw meats raw eggs um those types of things are going to be more challenging but if you if you're already pregnant, then you can start to become more sensitive to the foods that you're reacting well to and the ones that are not giving you such good reactions. But if you haven't got pregnant yet, but you would like to get pregnant, now is the time to do something like discover your metabolic type, find out what diet is right for you. And that's something that we can work on together. Um, so you can message me and find out how you can find out what your metabolic type is. Taking notes, yay sis, we need to pop out some more babies. My sister just came on live on Facebook. Yes, you need to take some notes so you can pop out some more babies. My love. Your first baby was lovely, but he's old now, so he needs a sibling. Um, <laughs> this is Zindi. My love. Okay, so as far as what to eat while you're pregnant, eating as healthily while you're pregnant as you did before you got pregnant, it's there's not much difference in it. Because once you find your metabolic type, once you find out the diet that works best for you, um, it's going to be the best diet for you to eat whether you're pregnant or not. There are certain things that you may need more of. So if you have, if you feel that you are lacking in um, energy and um, like if you pull down your eyelids like that and the, the, this part is really light pink, that is an indication, not a diagnosis, but it's an indication that you could be lower in iron. So if you pull down there, you can see that, because I don't want everyone to start pulling down there and start, oh my gosh, I'm anemic. I'm just saying, that is one indication that you could possibly be lacking in iron. Therefore, eating dark green leafy vegetables, some nuts and seeds, well-soaked, well-prepared beans, those types of things can help to boost your levels as well as supplements like Spartone, Floridex, all those kind of things. So if you know that you have got certain challenges, you had certain dietary challenges or nutritional deficiencies before you got pregnant, then definitely work to step them up and rectify them during pregnancy. One of the podcasts that I've got on Naturally You Radio, so again, if you go to my website, thenaturallyyoucoach.com and click on podcast or go to thenaturallyyoucoach.com forward slash naturally you radio, then one of the episodes, I think it's episode five or six is how to naturally boost your iron levels even when you're pregnant because that was one of the challenges that I had when I was pregnant is that I've always had low iron and I realize now looking back to my teenage years I've had low iron since my teenage years but it hasn't really challenged me that much until my last pregnancy when because I'm normally fighting with the doctors they're like oh you need this you need this test you need this procedure whatever i'm like no 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 i just try and have as little intervention as possible and handle things naturally but when my iron dropped really low in my last pregnancy i was even like yeah you're right my iron is low i need to do something about this so um in that podcast on the naturally you radio i literally spent about three weeks doing going hard on boosting my iron in again in a very holistic way so i wasn't just like pumping myself full of iron i was making sure that i was doing things to I was making sure I wasn't eating anything that was going to block the absorption of the iron and making sure I was eating plenty of iron and making sure that my body was generally able to absorb the iron efficiently as well. Um, so it was like a three part thing that I was doing with the iron. Um, but I'm always I'm always cautious about giving dietary advice when it comes to anything just because everybody's body is different so I could be there talking about oh tomatoes are amazing and then someone's allergic to tomatoes and then just all goes over their head so um that's why I work with clients one-on-one -on -one and work out what works best for you in particular and then we craft and develop a diet plan for you based on that even though there are what what is more likely is me giving recommendations of the things to avoid so like I said during pregnancy as far as food is concerned the raw cheeses the raw milk um lactose products in general um if you're a person of color because close to 80 percent of us are lactose intolerant which means we can't handle the sugar that's found in cow's milk and dairy products so are there foods that you would not recommend to eat thank you sis that's exactly what i i can help you with definitely is um yeah blue vein cheeses moldy cheeses dairy products that are raw so raw milk raw um cream raw butter raw yogurt Raw eggs is another food, raw fish, raw chicken, and yes, there are people who eat raw chicken. 
raw chicken, raw red meat, all those raw um, animal products are not safe to eat during pregnancy. Some people say that nuts are not safe to eat during pregnancy. This is what I have found um, through my research and through clinical experience working with clients and with myself personally as well. If you've got a history of nut reactions or nut allergies and sensitivities before you got pregnant, it's a good idea to completely avoid them during your pregnancy. If the person you are having the baby with, if daddy is allergic to eggs, so allergic to nuts, then that's also not something, that's another reason why you should probably avoid nuts during your pregnancy because the DNA from daddy that's in you that's in the baby that you're carrying could be reacting to those nuts as well processed foods not too not good exactly yep and process so as well as those natural foods that it's not a good idea to eat then yeah just the so again the general rules of health the general rules of diet making sure we're not eating um the the three nasties, as I call them, the aspartame, the trans fats, the hydrogenated oils, the food, too many foods in tins, too many foods from the freezer. You want to avoid microwave foods. You want to avoid um, poor, cheap meats, poor, cheap um, fast food restaurant stuff. <laughs> All of those kind of stuff you want to avoid. Um, so when it comes to, we haven't written on the board yet, but when it comes to things like essential fatty acids, which are so critical for, again, it's just, just crit it's like essential fatty acids and water are two of the things that I just don't feel get that much respect and that we just constantly need to remind ourselves to make sure we're having enough of them. Um, when you're eating too many processed um, rancid fats, it literally stops your body from being able to absorb the healthy essential oils and the essential fatty acids that you want to take. So it's always a good idea to make sure you're reducing the amount of those oils so that your body can absorb the healthier fats as well. So that was exercise. Um, so we spoke about water, we spoke about exercise. Now herbs. Now herbal remedies are literally one of the reasons why I'm here today doing this work because when I was having my womb health challenges it was herbs oils diet changes and lifestyle changes that allowed me to heal myself um, and then go on to help other people as well now during pregnancy there are some herbs that you definitely want to avoid there are some you want to avoid throughout the whole pregnancy there's some you want to avoid throughout the first few months um, and then there are some that are safe to use throughout and the same with oils we're talking about essential oils now so the the few oils that the few herbs that i can recommend that are safe for you to take from the moment you find out you're pregnant until birth are things like nettle which is super nutrient rich dandelion which is again super nutrient rich peppermint oil peppermint um herb which is great for like nausea and dehydration and moods and digestion and all those kind of things throughout your pregnancy but if you intend to breastfeed i would definitely recommend you stop taking peppermint oil when you're about seven months pregnant because peppermint herb and oil can actually get in the way of breast milk production so literally they recommend that when you um, have the baby and you are breastfeeding when you are ready to wean that's when you can start taking peppermint oil because it was peppermint herb because it will actually help to reduce your breast milk supply but in the beginning it's it's nice and safe and then ginger is really good for um keeping your immune system prepped and um which we don't want to do too much of during your pregnancy in fact for other reasons but um it also very much greetings to let me cake sis greetings um Varelba, thank you so much for coming in, sis. Um, but yeah, peppermint is great. Sorry, ginger is great for nausea as well. Like people have said that they used to chew on the hot raw ginger root, drinking ginger tea, all of those kind of things really helps with the nausea at the beginning of the pregnancy. And it can help calm your stomach if you have tummy upsets or stomach upsets throughout your pregnancy as well. So those are some of the herbs. Some of the... Um... Now with... And again, there are some herbs you just don't want to take. You don't want to take herbs like Dong Kwai, Saw Palmetto, those kind of herbs. You don't want to take Gentian. You don't want to take all of those kind of things during your pregnancy. Those are... Oh, yes, fennel is useful throughout your... Um, throughout Not for the first three months, but then moving forward, that's a really great herb. And then obviously... Oh, how could I forget? Raspberry leaf tea. Again, it's not recommended to take that too early on in the pregnancy, but throughout the last three months, you can guzzle um, raspberry leaf tea because it's a euthyrine tonic, so it's helping to... Um, prep, prepare, prepare and tone 
the muscles of your uterus for delivery. It also helps with breast milk production um, and all of those kind of things as well. And that toning of your uterine muscles also helps your womb to regain its form and shape once you've had the baby as well. Thank you so much, sis. Um, oh, yes. And fennel is also useful for producing breast milk as well. So again, it's one of those herbs that you can take um, after you've had the baby as well, because it's also very useful. Support and checks. So, okay. Um, yeah, support and checks. So this is one of the things, it's not kind of necessarily food, herb, diet, lifestyle related, well, food, herb, diet, intake related, but it's something that definitely does contribute to a healthy pregnancy. And that's making sure you've got enough support um, around you and that you're, have, you've got a system of checks in place. So whether you decide to go to the doctor and the midwife and have all of those checks or not, because no matter where, depending on where you're listening to this from, there are different laws that apply in different countries regarding what you have to do and what you don't have to do. Because I know in certain states in America, you don't even ever have to present to a medical professional throughout your whole pregnancy and birth. And there is such a thing as free birthing in the UK, which means that you have the right to decide how much contact you have with medical professionals during your pregnancy. So, but regardless of which route you go down and you can be the most you can be the greatest expert in pregnancy you can be a trained doula a trained midwife I would always still fully recommend that while you are pregnant you have some kind of a support system in place obviously the first person that should be there is your is the father um and guys bless their hearts um are brilliant husbands are amazing my husband's been there for every single birth he was the only person there at one of the births because the midwives took too long to get there and baby girl was like i'm coming out right now so husband was the midwife and helped me deliver the baby and he was so calm it was amazing but he, that was like the seventh child the, the that was the fifth child he had seen being delivered so he was like a bit of an old hand at it by that time um but as much as we do need our men there, as much as we do need the fathers there for so many reasons, and we want to make sure that they're included in the whole process and all that kind of stuff, it's also not our job to kind of look after them and babysit them during our pregnancy because we obviously have our own things going on. But we want to make sure that they're there as much as possible because that's good for you, it's good for the baby, it's good for them, it's good for everything. Um, but we also want to make sure we have that feminine energy around us as well. So whether you decide to go down the route of having a doula, which I would highly recommend finding a good doula. So a doula is like in between the midwife and the mother. She is a, she is an advocate for the mother's wants and desires due, due, throughout the pregnancy and the birth. So she um, can help you throughout the pregnancy, during the birth and afterwards as well. And she's got your best interests in at heart. Whereas very much the medical professionals and the midwives, as much as they are there to look after you, they very much have the child's um, welfare at heart. And they're obviously trained in medical, in the medical profession. So they're not always up to, as up to date in the other aspects of health, whether that's complementary and natural medicines or the mental, emotional, spiritual needs of the mother as well. So they are so incredibly supportive and amazing. And I loved working with the doulas that, that I had as much as I did when I was pregnant. I didn't ever have like a full doula that was with me the whole way, but the, the information and support that I did get from doulas while I was pregnant was just was priceless. There is um, then also midwives. So if you do decide to just literally just go down the red, red, regular medical professional route, then get the support of a good midwife. And I know that it's, see the challenge with midwives is that, you know, they work shift. So they're not always gonna, you may not always see the same midwife at every appointment you go to. Every single midwife that I've worked with throughout my pregnancy has never been the same midwife that has actually been with me during my birth. And that has always been a bit of a disconnect for me. The fact that I've worked with and got to know a midwife, but then when it comes to my birth, a stranger comes. That's always been a bit challenging for me, but you know, my births were all good. They were healthy. They were complication free. So that's the most important thing. With a doula, you, the same person you're working with throughout your pregnancy is going to be there um, when you're giving birth as well, unless something completely dramatic or drastic happens. That You've got that continuity of care. But if you do decide not to have a doula for any reason, then try and um, find 
a midwife or put it out there that you want a midwife who can offer you as much support as possible work with your midwife so you have a good relationship with them and if you're not having a great relationship with your midwife do see if there is a way for you to find another midwife or if you can be supported by another midwife if at all possible during your pregnancy because that is really important another thing is checks so you want to do as much research as you can again either working with your doula or your midwife to know what is natural and what is healthy and what is safe during your pregnancy and not or not you shouldn't be getting really tight menstrual type pains you shouldn't be releasing too much vaginal fluid you should not be leaking fluid you should not be bleeding heavily during your pregnancy you shouldn't be getting really bad period like lower back pains on a regular prolonged basis too early on in your pregnancy those kind of things happening to right at the end when you're about to give birth is this something you're about to give birth but like when i was doing it at seven months and then with our second child at five and a half months those were not healthy symptoms with my first pregnancy i didn't actually know that much about pregnancy to know that that wasn't a natural symptom for me to go and get checked any sooner than i did so you want to do some research and make sure you are aware of what is healthy and what is safe um, and what's not and then if you know you're already a high risk mother maybe you've got high blood pressure you've got diabetes you're very underweight you're very overweight you've had premature births in the past you've miscarried previously if you know that you're high risk in any of those um, areas then you also want to do some additional research into um, what you can do to make sure you have a healthy pregnancy and again that's going to be something that I'm going to be talking a lot more about healthy pregnancies and premature birth prevention moving forward very soon um, so you want to make sure you've got water exercise herbs and oils um, ascent, um, support and checks so again even if you've decided that you don't want to have a, a doula or you want to have a doula but you don't necessarily want to go to the monthly checks at the hospital do make sure you've got some system in place of just keeping an eye on is everything going well with myself and my pregnancy because there's some things that it's going to be challenging for you to recognize in yourself one of my sister's um, sh her baby's her placenta basically wasn't working and the fluid had drained out of her placenta for quite a long time for like nearly four weeks before she realized anything was wrong um and that had some implications to the baby she did have to have the baby induced earlier than normal but that wasn't something she was able to recognize in herself but when she got around medical professionals people trained in pregnancy they were able to recognize it so again that's another reason why it's useful to have somebody around because if you're actively working to make sure you're having a healthy pregnancy it's going to reduce the chances of any of these things happening but you also want to just make sure you're you're you've got something in place to just help you keep an eye on things and recognize things that you may not uh, recognize the last thing that you want to make sure you're doing is having focus on success and that's actually a really big one because i know that i you know when it comes to pregnancy we want to make sure that we're um keeping mothers as safe as possible and we're highlighting the things that um that they can do to stay safe and the things that could potentially go not so well and things they can do to prevent that but we also want to make sure that as much as possible we're focusing on success so when our first baby was premature and then our second baby was so premature that he um, passed on at eight months. I, it took almost everything I had to stay focused on a positive outcome with the third pregnancy that we had. Um, and I literally had to kind of shut off from the world. I worked very little during that pregnancy. I stayed home the vast majority of the time during that pregnancy. I upped my supplement intake. I was making sure I was focused on my food. I was reading loads about premature birth prevention. I would have a nap every afternoon. Like I remember one of our brothers came up to um, visit us because we had moved to Luton. And I had to say, you know what, excuse me, I'm gonna have to go and go and have a nap because I've got to have my like regular naps every day. I was so like focused on, okay, I'm gonna make sure I'm doing everything possible because I'm gonna have a full term home birth. And when I was having conversations with the doctors and they were like, you know, you've had premature babies in the past, so it's likely you're not gonna have a full term birth. And we're probably gonna have to give you a induced 
um, uh, and in, we're going to probably have to induce your baby at a certain time or give you a C-section or blah, 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 blah. I just had to keep on telling them I'm going to have a home birth. I was convincing myself as much as I was trying to convince them because I was trying to stay focused on progress. And since then, as many of you know, I've started doing a lot of work and workshops. I've literally got a workshop coming up on the 8th of September with alternatives in London on goal setting, affirmations and vision boarding. One of my clients, one of my clients that actually came up and did a testimonial and spoke about her journey at the last Naturally You Day, literally spoke about the fact that she created a vision board um, when she wanted to get pregnant. And on that vision board, it had the month the baby was going to be born. It had, you know, the um, sex of the baby, the gender of the baby. It had so much information. She was so focused on that and everything on that vision board started to come to pass. And she was, she was a sister who had had some challenges when it came to pregnancy and birth previously um, and her previous baby had had some health challenges as well because she was so focused on the positive outcome that she wanted everything started coming now obviously she was putting in the work the physical work behind this but the work to the work doing the work is a lot easier when you're focused on success and you've got a vision and an image of what success is. So my vision of success was simply, I am going to have a full-term baby at home. That was my vision of success. It wasn't riches and gold and all these kind of things. And I'm going to pop back and my figure's going to be gorgeous in two months after I've had the baby. None of that was important to me. It was just, I'm going to have a baby full-term at home. So... If you are having any doubts or concerns about your pregnancy, one of the, th or even if you're not having any doubts and concerns, but you just want to stay as positive as you possibly can throughout your pregnancy because of the, the hormonal rushes that we have during our pregnancy, it can be easy to be very positive one minute and then just have lags and lapses. And that happens with every area of our life, which is why vision boarding and goal setting and affirmation helps everyone. But you want one of the things that you can do initially is to create some goals. I'm going to have a full term baby. I'm going to have a baby in the birth center. I'm going to make sure that I am in the squatting position when the baby comes. Whatever your goals are, I'm going to um, make sure I'm drinking plenty of water. I'm going to get my herbal remedies together. Um, we're going to have all the equipment that we need before the baby comes. We're going to get the, the nursery ready or whatever it is. I'm going to have the, you know, the organic mattress for this baby. Whatever your goals are regarding your pregnancy, write them down. Write down what your goals are. And then for each of your goals, create an affirmation. So if the goal is I'm going to, I'm definitely going to make sure I have a full term baby. Your affirmation, it, which is a statement that you say to yourself with I am at the beginning of it and you say it out loud looking at yourself, you would say an affirmation for each of the goals. So your affirmation every morning would be, I am going to be having a baby. And you can give the exact date, the exact date that would make your baby full term. I'm having my baby on this day. I'm having my baby in a, in a, in a home birth. I'm having my baby in a pool. I'm having my baby, whatever it is, I am, and then whatever it is that you want. You've got your goals, you create affirmations from those goals, and then you can create a very simple vision board. And your vision board can literally just be like an A4 piece of paper with pictures on it and words on it that represent the things that you want. So you're looking at your goals, you're saying your affirmations, and then you're looking at the images, the positive images of the things that you want to create. The buggy that you want to get, the baby clothes that you want your baby to have, um, you looking happy holding a baby, hub, you and hubby in a like nice family picture, whatever it is, you getting some sleep, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, pictures of herbs, pictures of oils, pictures of healthy food, pictures of you running, holding a buggy, or you can find other pictures of people, other people doing these things and then cut your face out and stick them onto it. So it like at a glance, it, you're imagining that that's you doing that thing. That's one of the techniques of vision boarding is putting your face all over it as well. So you can do all of those things so that you're focused on success. And again, as you can well imagine, that process helps everyone in every area of your life. But it is also definitely useful when it comes to working on having a healthy pregnancy. That has been the talk for today. That has been me sharing for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you everyone for coming in and joining me on Facebook and on Instagram. If you haven't already downloaded your free three part womb wellness gift set, please go to the naturallyyoucoach.com forward slash womb wellness gift to get your free gift set there. If you're not already on my mailing list, then definitely go ahead and join. If you go to the naturallyyoucoach.com 
and go to the freebies or the naturallyyoucoach.com forward slash free stuff, then any of the free gifts that you get there, you're very welcome, thank you so much. Um, any of the free gifts that you get there, when you download those gifts, it comes with a free subscription to my mailing list. I send out e-zines probably once a week, just letting you know about the new content I've created, whether it's videos or articles or recipes.